Hello, my name is Olivia Staples. I'm a nursing student at the University of South Alabama, and today I'll be performing the IV saline lock checkoff. So she's going to scan the room. Upon entering the room, I'm going to perform hand hygiene. I'm going to verify hospital policy as well as the order. I'm going to identify my patient using two identifiers. I have the patient care order form and his armband. My his name is Jaguar Jones. Jaguar Jones, date of birth, 825-1963. 825-1963, I'm going to assess his allergies. Notice he has an allergy to penicillin and it is written on his armband. I'm going to gather all my equipment, have it all here. I'm going to explain the procedure as well as provide privacy. I'm going to make sure the trash can is um, where I need it, perform hand hygiene, and put on my goggles. Now, I'm going to raise the bed to a working height, lower the side walls, make sure the patient is comfortable and in supine or sitting position. And I'm going to be sure to maintain privacy throughout, the, um, throughout that. And I'm going to now open my packages uh, using sterile technique. Now I'm going to get three pieces of tape. Now I'm going to clean the injection um, cap with the alcohol swab. I'm going to discard of that. And now I'm going to take my saline, remove the cap, and I'm going to prime it, making sure that it's primed. I'm going to connect it. I'm going to prime it one more time. Put the cap on. All right, now I'm going to loosen the cap, just so it's easier to remove later. Set that back in here. Now I'm going to remove my needle, put this aside and get out my tiger. Now I'm going to um, tell you the three principles of selecting a vein. I'm going to make sure it's on the most distal part of the non-dominant hand. I would select a large and spongy um, vein as well as make sure I'm not um, going over any bruises. And then the three principles for um, fostering the um, venous distension is uh, I'm going to lightly, um, lightly, um, um, stroke, lightly stroke um, the vein. I am going to make sure that the extremity is dependent and I would warm it to um, prevent vasodilation. And now I'm going to put on the tourniquet. And so I'm going to do this by, um, I'm going to place this about four to six inches above where I plan to put the Okay, now I'm going to put, um, well before I do that, I'm going to assess the um, appropriateness of the vein. I'm going to check the radi um, radial pulse of the patient. And now I'm going to put on my gloves. Okay, now I'm going to move what I need closer to the patient, so I'm going to make this closer and I'm actually going to flip it around and um, now I'm going to begin cleaning. So I'm going to take the chlorhexidine and I would push in the wings to activate it and I'm going to clean in uh, horizontal. Um, vertical motions, 
and circular motions for 30 seconds. And now I'm going to discard that and I'm going to make sure that the area dries completely. And now I'm going to um, take my needle and just and I'm going to um, anchor down the vein um, about uh, one and a half to two inches below where I'm planning to and I'm going to make sure I don't go over where I just cleaned. So I'm going to anchor it by stretching the vein. I'm going to tell my patient to um, remain still and um, that they would feel a slight pinch and I'm going to insert the needle with the bevel upwards at a 10 to 30 degree angle parallel to the vein. And once I see blood return, I will lower it, lower it and um, advance it um, a quarter of an inch. Now, I am going to advance the hub all the way in, making sure I do not take the needle in any further. And as soon as I advance it, I'm going to take and release the tourniquet. Now I'm going to apply pressure and I'm going to gently remove the needle to the shards container and I'm going to remove the tip and apply it to the hub. Now I'm going to Hold it and um, apply tape. Temporary tape to temporary secure it. And after that, I am now going to take. Um, oh, I'm going to first. Um, aspirate for blood return and then I'm going to uh, I'll normally advance all of the saline into um, the IV and while doing that I'm going to be observing for sw um, swelling. I'm not going to be doing this today so I'm just going to remove it and um, discard into the container. Now I'm going to take my um, tachyderm. I'm going to remove the lining and I'm going to place this all the way to the hub. And I'm going to gently remove the wrapper. Just part of that. Now that I've done this, I'm going to remove this tape. that and secure it to the patient like so. So now I'm going to discard all my equipment. Remove my gloves and I'm going to um, label and I'm going to label the date, um, the time, the gauge, and my initials. And I'm going to place this on the edge of um, the dressing. And now I am going to um, instruct the patient. Um, first, I am going to lower the bed. Before I do that, I'm going to lower the bed to a working height, raise the side rails, make sure the patient is comfortable and um, safe. I am going to now instruct the patient um, to uh, the correct things. Um, if there is IV dislodging to prevent that, as well as signs and symptoms of, um, of IV complications. So this would be um, if there was infiltration or if there was phlebitis as well as inflammation. And I would instruct the patient to let me know if it um, had stopped, if the fluid had stopped or if it had slowed down, um, as well as if um, uh, there was any bleeding in the uh, dressing. And I'd also tell them to, um, that they should 
secure it when they are moving, as well as to wrap it when they are about to shower. So now I am going to um, perform hand hygiene and I'm going to document. I'm going to document the date, the time, the location, the number of attempts, as well as the catheter size, the gauge, um, how the patient tolerated the procedure, um, whether a saline lock was used um, or flow rate and the method of infusion. And now I'm going to uh, begin discontinuing the IV. So I'm going to apply gloves and I already have my goggles on. I'm using a sepsis technique. So now I'm going to stabilize the catheter and remove the tachyderm, pulling towards I'm going to discard of that. And I'm going to remove the tape. Let's see. Discarded that as well. And now I'm going to, normally that would not happen, but for the sake of any, I'm going to continue. And I'm going to get a gauze and I'm going to um, apply pressure and I'm going to gently remove the catheter and I'm going to check the intactness of the tip. I'm going to discard that and I would apply pressure for about 30 seconds. And now I'm going to tape the gauze to my patient. And I'm observing for um, any complications such as redness, tenderness, um, or swelling, or if there's any pain. And um, now I'm going to make sure that the patient is comfortable, that um, they are uh, positioned safely, and that the um, bed is low to the lowest setting, the um, side rails are raised, the call light is in reach, and then I would go to the nursing station to document. And that concludes um, the checkoff. Thank you.